magic mow, mow. Hey guys, welcome. Today I want to talk about Little Nightmares by Tarser Studios. It was their first original game um, that they have put out. Very, very short. I mean, literally, Little Nightmares is a little game. <laughs> it is a horror puzzle platformer. So for anyone who likes puzzle platformers, I think they will find this game quite refreshing. There are some elements and some styles and things that they've implemented that are a little different and make for a lot of fun. The main character or the character you are playing in this game is called Six. What's with everyone having numbers like st Stranger Than Fiction? Isn't her name like 11? What's with all these powerful and adorable little girls? Maybe I need to legally change my name to like 12. <laughs> what do you guys think? What's a good number? That's gonna be the next trend. We're already running out of domain names and I can't even register a email because my name is so common. I should just change my name to a number. Kids are going to be born and they're just going to be like 06977 <laughs> and that's going to be their name. And then when the teacher reads out like the roll call, they're going to be like 5592 and it'll be like here. <laughs> I know. I'm going on a rant. I'm going on a tangent now, you know. <laughs> that's a whole other different topic. You don't know anything about Six. You don't know why she's there, where she's from, if, she, if she's even human. You don't know what her intentions are. It does get kind of dark and eerie halfway through and near the end, with the, especially in the ending with Six. So there's also gnomes that are hiding. I believe they're called gnomes. They kind of look like mushrooms, and they're these <laughs> little gnomey mushroom guys that run around throughout the game. And they sort of show you the direction of where you're supposed to go. And once you find them, she hugs them. <laughs> so I don't know the story behind it. And, you know, they don't really explain it in the game. She hugs these little gnomes. She has a cigarette lighter. There's a bunch of horrible monsters and creatures that are trying to eat you and chase you and kill you. I don't even know why she's in this world. It's basically just like an adult game of hide-and-seek, but a terrifying hide-and-seek. <laughs> Things, little details they added that I really enjoyed. So when she's running, if you sprint, she kind of cradles and hugs the cigarette lighter so that the flame doesn't go out. I like that detail. Also, when she's been running for a long time, she gets out of breath and slows down and she has to breathe and she's like, <sighs> like, I like that kind of stuff. Throughout the game, she gets hungry, so you have to feed her in order to progress. And that's like really dramatic. She, she's like, it's like she's starving, which makes sense because she doesn't eat very much throughout the game. And, but I like that they added that element too. So you're walking along and she's like, oh, oh. And you hear her tummy growling and the screen kind of like, there's a vignette and it's like, oh, and it gets darker and it shakes. And if you have a controller, you know, you're Controller shakes and you're like, ooh. I'm like, yeah, girl, that's how I feel. <laughs> that is exactly how I feel if I do not eat. So I got you. I, I was like, I'll get you some food. Yeah, no dialogue, wordless, even the monsters and the creatures themselves, they do not speak. They make these little grunts and noises. And these creatures are really grotesque. They are things of nightmares. They truly are. To be honest, the very first section with the monster that has these very long arms that he actually like even drags them because they're so long. That was the hardest level and the scariest monster in level in my opinion. The rest of it I actually ran through very very quickly as it's a very short game. You could probably finish it I'm thinking in like four hours. Maybe even less. I don't know. Four or five hours. I was trying to figure out how, like how to solve puzzles and jumping in the lighter and the sprinting and moving objects and throwing objects so maybe it was just because it was my first monster that I had to evade and 
I was also learning the game. Because I found the rest of the puzzles and the monsters were like super easy. Like I actually, they weren't very challenging. Which was good because it allowed me to sort of admire all the artwork, the graphics, um, how smooth it was. So, you know, I didn't come across any glitches. There's one which I still, to this day, I don't know if it's a glitch or not. So I might play that section again. Because you see this little basket and it jumps or it's a pot and it jumps. So I was like, oh, there must be a gnome in it or like a little creature or something. So I picked it up when I was in, there's a section called, well, the monster is called the butcher. And I'm in his kitchen. I pick up the pot and I go to throw it and it doesn't smash. <laughs> and the butcher hears me. So I'm like, ah, I like run and I like hide in the, the book. There's like this bookcase that has a bunch of ingredients and books. I'm hiding there. My little girl, she's like, like next, like right next to like an onion or something. <laughs> like her head's kind of the shape of like an onion. So she's like sitting there <laughs> next to an onion, just like. And the butcher comes, he's all this fat blobby thing with like a butcher knife and a chef's hat. And he comes up and he's like, Wah! that's what they sound like. They sound like, Wah! like it's kind of high, this high pitched like squeal. I, I don't know how they were inspired to come up with that sound, but it's fine. He comes over and he's looking through the shelf and I'm like, oh, sh like he's going to see me, right? Like the, I don't look like an onion and there's an onion next to me. He's going to see me. <laughs> but lo and behold, he doesn't see me. So then I jump down again. I go, okay, this time I'm going to like really smash this pot. <laughs> so... I uh, pick it up, I go, I throw it again, and it goes, dink, it just bounces, and it won't smash, and I'm like, oh, like, maybe I'm not supposed to be doing this, and I'm dropping the key, and I'm, you know, I'm messing up the whole game just to try to smash this pot. Again, the, the butcher comes over, and he's like, because <laughs> he hears a noise, so he comes, I hide in the next to the onion again, but this time he actually saw me, like, and he goes to reach for me, so I, I run, I, like, push my character as far as I can into the corner, and she's just like this, and then <laughs> he's, like, swiping, trying to, like, get me, but he can't, and he runs off again, and I probably tried to smash that pot, like, five times until I was like, ah, okay, you know, like, I think he caught me, the butcher caught me and I died and I'm like, I'm not gonna do that. Like maybe I'm not supposed to smash this pot. So whatever, like <laughs> I'll read about it later. You have to get to the far right of the screen and then once you get up, you're able to walk on beams, beams above the kitchen. And obviously you don't wanna fall because then he'll get ya and he'll shove you in the oven and make a nice little, little girl pie. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, uh, along the way, there's, like, little pots and things, and <laughs> I full-on would, like, run up, grab the pot, like, throw it, because <laughs> I knew he couldn't get me once I was on the beams above the kitchen, so I was being, like, a little, you know, super, right? <laughs> I, I, I would toss things, throw things, like, I was, like, trying to throw pots at him, because, I don't know. I was just having fun. You know, you're creeped out. Like, these creatures are freaky, but they don't necessarily jump out at you or, you know, like, all of a sudden it's there, they grab you. There's none of that. It's, you know where they're coming, you know. It's it's more of a stealth game. So you're just kind of creeping around, scuttling from place to place, hiding. Like I said, it's the ultimate hide-and-seek game for adults. There's also one part on a big dining table where you have to dash and dodge between these big monsters like eating food and they try to sway them to eat you. And they also do the high pitched squeal. <laughs> As you're dashing between their plates, I, ca I got caught at the end and one guy grabbed me and he's like, nah, 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 and I died. I was like, ah, he just ate my head. The next time I was like, oh, I'm doing it right, I think. I think I have to dash through all the plates. And I was like, wait a second. There's a, there's like a little sausage link or something hanging off of the edge. So I thought, what if, and there was one chair that I was able to move. So I thought, what if I pull this chair over and then I just like climb up onto the table instead of starting from the very 
the beginning of the table where it was easy to get up. That way, I only have to pass by, like, two monsters instead of, like, the eight. And it worked! And I was surprised. So, if you get to that level where there's a big, long table and you have to dash between the monsters eating, apparently you can pull the chair that's to your far right of the screen, climb up halfway through on top of the table. I think there's like sausage links or a bar stool. I can't remember what it was, but I just climbed up it. And voila, it was way easier than having to dodge everyone. Before, I think it's right before the last section of the game. I don't want to give too much away because it's a fairly new game and it's actually very fun and beautiful. To not ruin the magic, that part before the final level where you get to just, you're not in control, you're just viewing the artwork that they've generated and the graphics and kind of the world you're in, this place. Uh, it's very, very beautiful. It's very... I just sat back and I kind of watched it. I was like, I'm thoroughly enjoying this. Like, wow, this is beautiful. Even though it's super creepy. <laughs> it's this, you know, creepy, horror, dystopia, you know, kind of like a some disturbed cruise ship. <laughs> yeah, the camera. Oh boy. How the camera moves in this game is... Gorgeous. I really really liked how they did that style. The movement wasn't jerky, you know, it's like based on if your character turns left and then it turns right. It doesn't just follow the character. It was this kind of like floating, zooming in and out slowly, expanding. Like you could see so much more on your screen. It wasn't just focused on six and that gave this very kind of eerie, creepy vibe, and you would see things like someone being hung from the ceiling um, if you walked more forward and stuff like that. So it just really expanded the environment and showcased the creepy, dark horror scene. So I really enjoyed that. So you don't know where you are, you don't know anything about Six, you don't know why you're exploring or what you're doing. There, it's all puzzles, it's all just solving puzzles and moving from room to room until you get to the very last scene. Then you get to kind of fight in, a, in an essence, but it's, you know, it's not really fighting. I enjoyed it. It's worth playing. And I look forward to many more games coming out of Tarsier Studios. Oh, be sure to tell me if there's any games that you guys would like me to uh, review. Also, or just to check out, I believe Steam is going to have their summer sale soon. Sum summer sale soon. Summer sale soon. Summer sale soon. Summer sale soon. <laughs> I believe Steam is going to have their summer sale soon. So uh, I'm looking forward to that to try some new games. I gotta finish Alien Isolation and Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Other than that, if you guys have game suggestions, please do not hesitate to leave it in the comments. Catch you guys on the flip side. I have a little six figure. I gotta find her. Uh, she. <laughs> Maybe I'll be her for Halloween. Maybe that'll be my Halloween costume. I'm small and I'm assuming she's Asian. I'm kind of small and Asian looking. I just need like a raincoat to like cover my face. <laughs>